find here in this city in the 18th century would have been imported from somewhere else in the world. Uh, fabric is coming to us from China, from Japan, from India, Persia, the Ottoman Empire, uh, or as close to home as France and England and Scotland and Ireland. Uh, the one place that you won't find fabric for sale from in the 18th century is from here in America. Um, that fabric that's made here, which by the best estimates of the 18th century, makes up only about 10 to 15 percent of everything that we consume on an annual basis, is for the most part made out of large plantations here in the American South, really for use on those plantations. And it tends to be a mid-quality utilitarian textile that most of them clearly are enslaved workers. Um, that fabric is so expensive to produce here that you would never find it for sale here. The margin for retail is so small that no one's going to try to sell it for profit because you're not going to make enough profit in selling it and no one's going to want to buy it because you can import cheaper fabric. Uh, the most fashionable varieties and usually the cheapest varieties of fabric are being imported through London from all over the globe. And they start bringing over silkworms, but they bring the wrong variety of mulberry trees. Um, and then in addition to that, by 1610, when the colony is, is on the verge of failure, they're, run, they're finding that these, the colonists who should be growing food and, and preparing the colony and, and producing something to sustain themselves spend all of their time running around picking, uh, picking uh, insects and predators off of these mulberry bushes that are preying on the silkworms. An article that I read relatively recently about um, about um, uh, spider silk. Um, and this woman out in California was manufacturing clothing from the spider silk, things like camel's down and bark cloth. Um, we even make a little bit of mohair, but usually a lot of flax hemp and wool. Um, there is a little bit of sericulture here in Virginia in the 18th century. It actually goes back as far as 1610, we were saying, uh, when they, they bring over silkworms and mulberry trees to try to see if they'll, they'll take on here. Not only did they bring the wrong variety of mulberry trees that the silkworms really hate, uh, but the colonists in this, these nascent days of the colony when it's on the verge of failing on the edge of a knife, they find that the colonists are running around chasing away predators because everything here feeds on the silkworm uh, and they, all they do is lay there and get eaten. Um, and so what you find is that they dabble with it now and again throughout the 18th century. In the 1740s, right, yes, in the 1740s, they started a little bit of silk cultivation in Georgia, of all places, and it lasted from about 1740 uh, to about 1745, um, when they finally just gave up trying. In fact, there's an advertisement in uh, the London Public Advertiser in 1744 that talks about how Queen Charlotte, or I'm sorry, Queen Caroline of Brunswick, uh, who was the queen at the time, had a, a gown made out of Georgia silk.